Hi. It's uh, 8th of March 2020 and it is International Women's Day. Now, from the outset, uh, I want to be absolutely clear. I fully support this day as a concert. I think it's a, a very important day. It's a day I always um, kind of observe in some way, um, whether it be just something basic like sharing a post on women's rights, whether it be, uh, I mean, for example, um, I may watch the film Suffragette with uh, Carrie Mulligan, um, a film made about four years ago, covering uh, a large aspect of the women's suffrage movement in Britain. Good film. Um, I always, it's always on my mind, let's put it that way, on this day. Um, some people may be surprised at that, given my criticism of third wave feminism. I don't want to say anything that I have said. I stand by those positions. But um, I don't take this kind of binary view that you either um, have to agree with every aspect of third wave feminism or you're an enemy of the movement. Um, I am critical of many aspects of it, and I think with good cause, but it doesn't mean that I'm blind to issues that women face. It doesn't mean that I downplay or ignore those issues. Um, and there may be some men out there who take issue with this day. They may say, oh, it's just a virtue signal. It's just for um x y and z but the point is it's an international day and no one can say with a straight face that there aren't very real problems that women face around the world uh, i would argue more so in some societies than others but the situation for women isn't perfect everywhere um i mean it isn't perfect in any country certainly there are huge gulfs between say the nordic states and conservative Islamic societies. But incidentally, it isn't just Islamic societies where there is uh, deeply entrenched patriarchy. And by patriarchy, I'm not talking about the Tumblr feminist patriarchy. I'm talking about actual patriarchy that keeps women down, like literally. Um, so this is a real issue. Um, for example, in Pakistan, there is an event uh, known as the Orat March. I may be pronouncing that wrong. Apologies if I am. Or at in Urdu, meaning women. It's a women's march. It's for um for women's rights, basic rights. And sadly and shockingly, but not surprisingly, it's uh you know the organisers have received violent threats for no other reason than uh, trying to push for equal opportunities. The Google Doodle today was well designed. I thought that was uh, you know they've got more and more artistic over the years. So. Kudos to whoever designed that. They had a kind of, I don't know if you call it a kaleidoscope, but if you've seen the Google Doodle today, it's, it's well designed. It kind of starts off with the early women's suffrage movement um, figures and then gradually spans out and gets more colourful. Um, the implication being as time has went on, women have, uh, the rights have been more advanced. Um, I can still think, though, unfortunately, of things that affect women around the world. Um, uh, I had a debate yesterday, I think I mentioned this with a French um, friend, um, I don't know whether she still sees me as a friend or not, it was quite a testy debate, but um, she misconstrued that I thought that the situation for women in the West is perfect, that's not my position, never been my position, I mean the Weinstein case um, shows that there are situations that women do face that um, Let's be honest, men don't face on the same scale. I'm not going to say men don't face them. I'm not going to say that men cannot also be victims of sexual harassment. They can. But I don't think it's as widespread. If I'm being totally honest, I just don't think it is. Um, I, th I would say to men's rights activists and masculists, um, you know, you can still stand up for men's rights, you can still speak up on those issues and not support feminist double standards whilst recognising that there are things that impact women. I mean, it sickens me to see some of the things that women go through around the world. Um, I find violence against women absolutely repugnant. Now, again, 
I know that women can be violent. I know that it's wrong either way. But um, the fact of the matter is there are some men who use their girlfriends and wives like footballs, to put it bluntly. And these so-called men, it's just, I, I cannot understand how you could do that to someone that you're supposed to love and care about over the most trivial things because your football team's lost because the dinner isn't exactly the way you demanded it i just find that disgusting um i i don't understand it i believe it i i know it happens but i don't understand it um so i think it is important that men um speak out against that but i would say particularly men in kind of macho type environments i've heard for example of um boxers who have spoken out against domestic violence um okay some of them have also been guilty of it but the point i'm making there is it's kind of a very alpha macho sort of um domain and for men like that to speak out against it i think is important because that carries more weight in a sense um just anyone speaking out against it because it says no what you're doing is not manly that's not the right of passage to be a man to keep your girlfriend or your wife in line so to speak um we also i think an important part of this day is honesty um fact of the matter is in too many societies women are second class citizens and for all the propaganda we hear about women being equal under Islam, um, ask about inheritance, ask about divorce rights, ask about um, can a daughter inherit the same as her son, um, which I mentioned. But um, take, for example, the head covering thing. Now, I'm, I don't want to devote this whole video to that because it's only one issue, but it is an important issue. Um, I posted on my timeline, in fact, that iconic photo of the young Iranian woman uh, bravely taking off her head up. This isn't this isn't um, how can I put it? It's um, not hot air. This is a reality. So when I see um, Islamist women insist that women have a choice about this, um, they're lying. They're simply lying. Because the fact of the matter is in countries like Iran they don't have a choice. They don't. So I find it quite galling when Islamist women who claim that they're feminists stand up and say, oh, women have a choice in Islam. My response to them would be, you wear your hijab. Okay, I don't actually support laws to ban the hijab. I think the burqa is a different matter, but the hijab I wouldn't ban. But I would say that there's a great deal of hypocrisy around this debate and a great deal of dishonesty because uh, the whole focus, the trajectory that we've seen in the Western world has been about um the right of muslim women to wear it what about the right of women in islamic societies not to wear it where's the solidarity for those women that's what i would like to see because i'll tell you something they're they're risking imprisonment they're risking beatings they're risking stigmatization and there is a small number of men um not many but there is a small number of men in those societies who also bravely speak out um and they risk ridicule um so we need to stand with people who are on the right side of this. Um, so the next time an Islamist woman says, oh, there's no compulsion in Islam, show her. Show her that picture of young Iranian women risking imprisonment, being for no other reason than expressing their right to not wear it. Now, if they have the right not to wear it, then prove that don't harass them don't threaten them support it whether you agree with it or not support it i don't particularly like the hijab but i am saying i support the right to wear it so by the same token um i'm saying that there needs to be respect for those women who choose not to wear it and this is one of many issues i mentioned domestic violence um war rape is another major issue Whilst it is probably true that men are actually the main fatalities of war, for obvious reasons, they, uh, they're soldiers, they're combatants, and there's male civilians as well, um, older men, 
uh, and others, um, you know, men who are not professional soldiers. Uh, whilst it's true that they probably form the bulk of fatalities, it is also true that rape is used as a weapon of war in the most abhorrent way. Uh, I mean, some of the things you hear about from the Democratic Republic of Congo, so-called, um, is just sickening. Um, uh, and just to summarise some other issues, these are all summarised issues. Uh, for thinking of objectification of women, again, I mentioned, I made a video about the aesthetic of attraction. And again, I think that the whole objectif objectification thing could be very overblown. Having said that, you do see a kind of subculture um, among some young men that does kind of treat women um, in a less than respectful way. Uh, I remember I, a few years back, I went to my box club and a young guy, he was from the Far East, but that's not here or there. He, he said to me, my, my friend was a Chinese friend, but she, she was just interested for what to see what was all about. I think she was going to come to support me in the fight, actually. But anyway, she wanted to come along and see what, what were just what went on there kind of thing. And this young guy came up to me and said, uh, oh, Nathan, is that your bitch? Now, it was so casual that you could tell he didn't put any thought into it. I think, well, actually, you know, she's, yeah, she's my friend. If she was my girlfriend, she wasn't, I would have said that as well. Um, I, I mean, I wouldn't say she was my girlfriend. But that's the sort of on thinking sort of... Um, now, I'm not saying that this young guy was a terrible person, necessarily. Uh, I'm not suggesting he was, you know, a really bad guy, but you could tell that's the sort of attitude that you do see in some cultures. Uh, I mean, it's rife within R&B music. It's rife within hip-hop. No point denying it. Again, let's not be politically correct. It is rife in that culture. It is. Um, you know, treating women in that way. Of course, there's women that demean themselves and they don't do themselves any favours and they willingly do it. So, you know, that's free will, if you like. I mean, when you get it in the music industry, when people like Beyonce really, you know, they sell themselves, they sell their bodies as part of the whole medium of their art. It's irrefutable. And men are not forcing them to do that. That is a big part of their creative control. So um, that's kind of a pity. I mean, in the past, you saw successful artists, women artists, who didn't have to rely on that. Um, and I, I don't think they should have to. Whether it be pressure from the industry, whether it's their own, I don't know. But I, I think my, my take on the whole free will thing when it comes to anyone, but on this day, thinking of women, is live and let live. What, you know, if you're a feminist, what you shouldn't be doing is telling other women how to think or feel or dress. Now, when Islamist feminists or they claim that they're feminists, um, you know, okay, they want to call themselves that, we'll prove it. Don't tell other women they have to be modest. And by the same token, by the same token, if a woman, um, does um, want to dress a certain way, then other women, so long as she isn't imposing it, then other women can't tell her not to do that. So, like, for example, with hijabi women, I don't think they should be bullied into not wearing it. So I don't think women should say, oh, you're an idiot, don't wear it. But by the same token, it all comes down to the theocracy, you know? So... This is really some fundamental issues, and I think that there needs to be, um, I mean, hell, don't listen to me. Listen to women, listen to just common sense, because it comes down to um, live and let live. And unfortunately, in too many societies, that isn't the case, because women cannot live and let live, because there are consequences to trying to live just as they want to be, and that is, it's wrong. I'm not that optimistic that things are going to change overnight, but um, I'm relatively optimistic that there is gradual progress around the world, but it is only gradual. 
Um, I think there's still a lot of areas to go. I still believe that the situation in countries like Britain and Canada and the US is significantly better than other parts of the world, but that doesn't mean that I think it's perfect. I don't think that. I mean, um, the statistics for rape convictions in the UK are very, you know, that wouldn't give a uh, rape survivor a great deal of confidence. It's woeful, 3% or something like that. I do not believe this is because 97% of men are innocent. I think there's a, a lot of issues regarding how cases are prosecuted, how they come to trial and so on. So in the context of Britain, I'm thinking of women who are living in abusive relationships. I'm thinking of women who are trapped by that. I think if they've got children, they need to get the strength to get out of that. But it, it, it's repugnant how any man can abuse a woman in that way. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your background is. It's just wrong. Period. Um, anyway, I'll round this up. So um, to any female viewers, you know, um, this is your day. Best wishes. Uh, have a good day. And just be, be your best selves. You know, that's, I think, the best thing to do on a day like this. Be your best selves. Um, because I think as a general rule, rule with men and women, when we are our best selves, we are our best with other people. So for women, anyone watching this, um, be your best selves. You know, I mean this sincerely. I believe women bring light into the world. You know, the world without women would be a very dark place. There's been some very important women in my life and I can't imagine my life without them. So, yeah, happy International Women's Day.